Okay, so I'm being notified that there's people out there worshiping Samuel, Samuel, the angel. Okay. Do your research on what you're worshiping. There, there's a reason that do your research has become such a meme. And it's stuff like this. No hate to this creator, and please do not go to their page and start heckling them. Leave them be. Don't, as 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 folks say, don't touch the poop. We are here to use this uh, video as an example of how not to research, and how do your research is often used very condescendingly by people who in fact do not know how to do it. But don't go hassle them, leave them alone. Now, it's only become like a cornerstone of my personality at this point, but I do actually, in fact, teach intro to research writing and a big part of the curriculum is learning how to actually do research. So when people say do your research, whether it's in stuff like magic, whether it's in goofy stuff like, I don't know, uh, politic, okay, there's some things we gotta be mindful of when we do our research. In fact, there's this really cool thing called the crap test that is awesome for figuring out like whether the source you're looking at is at all worth talking about, like at all. And really all it has to do is like, is this source current? Like, is it up to date? Is it relevant to what it is you're researching? Um, is it accurate, right? Does it have accurate information that's backed up by other sources when you cross-reference? Is the person who wrote it credible? Do they have any kind of qualifications for what they're talking about, right? And is the purpose of it clear? Like, is there any bias in it? Is it, like, very obviously trying to push you in one direction? Is it obscuring facts and putting other things in the way? Is it not treating counter-arguments fairly? Is it not being fair? If I hold the crap test up to a lot of sources that uh, so-called occultists and paranormal uh, folks and witches and whoever else are looking at, they will just be dead on arrival. I'm not- I- A lot of the sources I see people fling around on witch talk and in spiritual spaces ain't shit. And when you have sources that ain't shit and you don't use your crap test and you don't- you don't evaluate whether or not what you're looking at is like actually useful and worth looking at. You end up with takes like this. There's people out there worshipping Samuel, Samuel. You literally are, if you're worshipping this angel, okay, you literally are worshipping Satan. That was his name before he became the enemy. Okay. Baby, please enlighten me as to who Samuel is. Did you mean Samael? Samael. Because if that's the case, then baby, we gotta walk it back. Hold on. Hold on, start from the top. Show me your work. Show me your math. How you? What are you talking about? That Samael's original name was Satan, and that when people worship this angel, which is honestly a separate topic, that they're worshiping the enemy. Now here I have a copy of the Jewish Annotated New Testament, and this is something that is put together by biblical scholars, theologians, and everything else. It is published by Oxford University Press, which automatically bumps up its credibility because university presses don't really fuck around with what they're publishing. And it's got a lot of essays in the back uh, by multiple other, you know, again, scholars and theologians. One of them is about supernatural beings uh, by Rebecca Lessies. Let's take a look. There's a subsection that says Satan, the forces of evil, and Hades. And so we start with this. The figure of Satan develops from references in the Tanakh, where he is a member of the Divine Council, into the enemy of God and all humanity. So he didn't start that way. The Satan, right, this this word that means adversary, this word that is Hashatan, means literally just like someone who is opposing you, and as a title, did not originally start. <laughs> As the enemy, oh my god, he started as a member of the Divine Council, as in someone that, like, is rocking with God, right? And early biblical appearances of Satan present an ambiguous figure who is a servant of God. In Job, the accuser, Hebrew Hashatan, is the member of the Divine Council who tests Job to see if he will remain loyal to God despite the loss of his children, his wealth, and his health. Satan here is a title, not a personal name. Where- can I see your sources? Because this is just one of mine, and it already takes whatever you were saying and tosses it right out the fucking door. There are also plenty of scholarly resources on, like, Jewish mysticism, Christian mysticism, and everything in between. There are many things, um, uh, works on angelology. There are many different traditions in Christianity and Judaism that'll tell you completely different stories about the angel Samael. But basically, here's a rundown. The name Samael means Venom of God, and Venom of God is an aspect of God. 
when we understand angel names, we understand them not to be like just names, just titles. They are literally a piece of God embedded like an SD card into these angels to give them their form, their personality, their function. So Samael as a mask, as a name, is something that tells us that this angel is one of the punishing forces of God, one of the brutal, severe aspects. And that's why in many sects of mysticism and everything else, he can be either, you know, in occultism, in the goofy, like, more modern hermetic occultism, the husband of Lilith, who has billion, billion babies every day, or he can be still an archangel of God, ruling over one of the spheres of heaven, and working for God still. Like, there are many different interpretations of this angel. So to say, do your research, and then immediately say things that are demonstrably false, that doesn't help anyone. And that condescending, piss-ass attitude, sir, don't either. What the fuck do you want? Hello? Oh my god. When you are looking up information about angels, angelology, anything like this, you don't want to just trust, like, whatever freaking webpage Google pulls up. You want to look for articles, books by scholars and theologians, or, you know, commentaries on, like, older uh, mystic works, right? For instance, our understanding, Catholic understanding of the hierarchy of angels, actually comes from St. Thomas Aquinas' uh, Summa Theologica. And there is, in this gigantic thousand-page frickin' document, some description of the different ranks of angels and how they work. Also, all that stuff I said about, like, names being like an SD card that colors an angel and gives them their personality when they get an aspect of God to wear, that actually comes from the philosophy and thought of Henry Cornelius Agrippa. I was very surprised that I came to this conclusion independently and found out that he was also saying it. That's pretty cool. But the point is that, like, good research starts with going to reputable, educated, verified, and established sources. Not just anything that pops up when you Google some shit. People can absolutely work with Samael. They can actually even work with Samael both on a right-hand path perspective, as in because they're working with other angels like Michael and Gabriel and Raphael and everyone else, and they can also work with Samael on a left-hand path perspective because there are some, like, you know, denominations, sects, or otherwise factions in, all, in both Judaism and Christianity that also do see Samael as a fallen angel too. So... He's, he's kind of existent in both sides, in both realms. Because people kind of can't square this really mean angel with a loving God, despite the fact that his name gives away what aspect of God he is. There's also a lot to unpack with the idea that there's any enemy, any demon, any big spooky book out there trying to... I don't know, make you go nuts. This is the function of the accuser, is to test you, right? If we're in a court, he's pushing you, he's needling you with certain questions to try and make you slip, to try and make you break. Obviously, that's how he wins the case. So, try to maybe reflect on what weakness in yourself any demonic forces might be trying to pick at, and you'll have a lot more productive time than just throwing holy water around, screaming, freaking out at some force that you think is so other and outside of you. From an actual person who is uh, embedded in, in the discourse, do your research, but do it well.